Welcome to our lecture on the cow heifer reproductive tract. This presentation shall provide students with the step-by-step -step procedure in identifying the parts and functions of each part of the cow or heifer reproductive tract. This presentation was adapted with permission and some modifications from the lecture of Dr. John J. Parrish, a professor of reproductive physiology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. At the end of the session, students must be able to identify the anatomical parts of the cow or heifer reproductive tract, connect structures with function for the different parts of the female reproductive tract, and identify a follicle and corpus luteum in the ovary of a cow. This is the dorsal view of the cow or heifer reproductive tract. So these are the general parts that can be found in the reproductive tract of a cow or heifer. So starting with uh, this portion here, you know, we have here the ovary. Then after that, now we have the uterine horns. So we have two uterine horns. And uh, in between that, in between the two uterine horns is the bifurcation. And after that, now we have the uterine body. Then uh, we also have here, uh, this part here represents the cervix and the vagina. The suspensory tissue which supports the ovaries, oviduct, uterus, cervix, and the anterior vagina is the broad ligament. It supplies the vascular system, lymphatic, drainage, and the nerves to the tract. The portion which attaches to and supports the ovary is the mesovarium. The oviduct is surrounded by and supported by the mesosalpinx. The uterus is supported by the mesometrium. When we are going to examine the inside of the tract, particularly on the part of the vagina, we'll be able to see this, you know, these structures as shown in the image. So of course we have here, you know, this part here represents the vagina. Then we have here you know, the external cervical os and the fornix of the vagina. When we are going to cut into the lumen of the cervix or the cervical canal and the uterine body and at least uh, one uterine horn, with a scalpel or scissors, we can identify these structures. So of course, uh, again, this part here represents the uterine body, and this part here represents the cervix. And um, we are going to identify, you know, for example, in the cervical part, we have here you know, the presence of the cervical rings, the cervical rings in the cow, and we also have here you know, the presence of the internal cervical os, which is the transition between the, uh, of course, the cervix and the uterine body. Uh, another structure here, as shown in the figure or the diagram, is the uh, external cervical os, transition between the cervix and the vagina. This is the anterior part of the vagina and this is the fornix. When we are going to continue, uh, to cut up uh, towards the uterine horn, we'll be able to see this. So we have here the presence of the uh, caruncles. These are the areas where the placenta will attach to the uterus. The uterus itself is composed of three layers. We have the outer or the serosa, which is called the perimetrium and the muscle or the muscular layer which is known as the uh, myometrium and we also have the inner and the inner mucosa plus the submucosa which comprise the endometrium the next structure after the uterine horn is the oviducts the oviducts lie beyond the uterine horns and adjacent to the ovaries so note that in this slide we have two oviducts so this part here is the oviduct on this figure and we also have here another oviduct in this uh, image so of course on the left side we have here the presence of the uterine horn 
and the transition between the uterine horn and the oviduct is the uterotubal junction. And after that, we have, of course, the isthmus, the ampulla, and the this part here is the infundibulum. The broad ligament that supports the oviduct is the mesosalpinx. On the right side, we have here the presence of the infundibulum and the ostium of the infundibulum where you know, the egg will be uh, entered you know, after ovulation. And we also have here the fembria covering the surface of the infundibulum, which functions to catch or capture the oocyte at ovulation and transport it into the ostium. And um, we also have here you know, the junction with the uterus and the oviduct is the uterotubal junction as shown in this. A figure. This is the ovary of a cow and in this uh, ovary we have here the presence of the corpus luteum or the CL and the tertiary follicles. The function of the follicles are to produce as oocytes and the hormone estrogen. The function of the corpus luteum is the production of the progestins or the progesterone. The ovary in the cow is almond almond shape or ellipsoidal.